If you want to catch every single Pokemon in Gen 2, you will, at some point, have to learn about the catching mechanics and how to make the best of them. I was in that position, and what I have learned about Pokemon Gold, Silver and Crystal, and how broken these games are, was so funny I had to share it. One of the core mechanics of the series, Capture, is governed by a formula which gets tweaked almost every generation. In the first games of the series, Red and Blue, most of the calculations do not make any sense and are really confusing, understandable given how primitive Gen 1 was. Gold and Silver solved this by revamping the entire formula, leading to a more straightforward and easier to understand and explain process. In Gen 2, there are three determining factors taken into account during a capture. HP, statuses, and balls. Let's start with hit points. As expected, weakening a Pokémon by lowering its HP increases your catch rate. The formula used is based on the difference between max HP and current HP, and is linear, which means any damage dealt increases the catch chance. At 1 HP, you almost triple the base chance of capturing a Pokémon, without taking other factors into account. Note, however, that the increase is relative to each Pokémon's catch chance. For example, Ladyba goes from a 33.50% catch chance at max HP to 98.49% at 1 HP, while OO goes from 0.78% to 1.17. Still, everything is in order, working as intended, and, more importantly, makes sense for the player. A Pokémon should be easier to catch as it becomes weaker. And it is. Great. Next, statuses. There are five status effects in the game that can affect capture, separated in two tiers. In the first tier, we have Sleep and Freeze and in the second, we have Burn, Poison, and Paralysis. Each tier increases the catch chance by a flat amount at the end of the calculation, by 10 and 5 respectively, out of 256, meaning 3.91% for the first tier and 1.95% for the second. Or that's how things were supposed to work, but that's where we get a taste of the Gen 2 bustedness. Here's how it actually works. Sleep and Freeze increase your catch chance by 3.91, while Burn, Poison and Paralysis do absolutely nothing. That's right, due to an oversight, the check in place for these statuses always fails, meaning no increase. The intended increase wasn't that significant in the first place, but could have helped a lot for rare and legendary Pokémon. So when it comes to statuses, either you sleep or just chuck balls. Or you could get really lucky with an ice attack, but I wouldn't count on it. Finally, we have the balls. And that's where things get hilarious. But before we laugh, we first need to learn the basics of capture. See, every species of Pokémon has a fixed number indicating how easily they can be caught. That number is called catch rate, and the lower the catch rate, the harder the Pokémon is to capture. As a rule, the rarer a Pokémon is, the lower its catch rate. In Gen 2, balls increase a Pokémon's catch rate by a factor dependent on ball strength. For example, the Pokeball multiplies the catch rate by 1, the Great Ball by 1.5, and the Ultra Ball by 2, which makes sense. As balls get better, they have a bigger impact on your chance to successfully capture a Pokemon. I'm saying that because that is not at all how balls worked in Gen 1. They behave in a way you did not expect, and the Great Ball was actually the better ball. See, you know what? I'm not gonna get into Gen 1 catching mechanics, but it was really dumb. The other two normal balls are the Master Ball, which is an automatic success, and the Park Ball for the bug catching contest. 
which is equivalent to a great ball with a 1.5 multiplier. So far, so good. Everything is straightforward and works as you would expect. But Gen 2 also added a way to get special balls. Give Kurt in Azalea Town colored apricorns found in the world, and he will turn them into specific balls with specific requirements. If the Pokémon you are trying to catch fulfills these requirements, your ball will boost the catch rate significantly. If it doesn't, the catch rate is unaffected, turning it into a basic Pokéball. Now, I don't know if the developers were short on time, drunk, or if Kurt is just terrible at his job, but most of these balls do not have the intended effect. So it is time to play a game. Working or busted. We start with the Lure Ball, made from blue apricorns. The in-game description states, a ball for Pokémon hooked by a rod. The ball multiplies by 3 the catch rate of a Pokémon if you are fishing. Not the most useful ball, as most fish Pokémon are easy to catch, but still working as intended. Next, the Friend Ball, made from green apricorns. A ball that makes Pokémon friendly. This ball multiplies the catch rate by 1 and sets the friendship value of a caught Pokémon to 200. Again, working well! See, any caught Pokémon starts with a default friendship value of 70. The Friend Ball gives you a significant boost, and is actually a good ball. So where are the broken balls I keep talking about? Well, let's look at the Fast Ball, made from white apricorns. A ball for catching fast Pokémon. The Fast Ball multiplies the catch rate by 4 if the wild Pokémon is Magnemite, Grimer, and Tangela. What? What? How does that even work? More than just being busted, it's also very specific. How does that happen? Turns out, the ball is supposed to work for all the Pokémon in three different tables. Pokémon with a 10% chance to flee, 50% chance to flee, or 100% chance to flee. Instead, it just works for the first three Pokémon from the first table, which happen to be Magnemite, Grimer, and Tangela. A ball that works on 3 out of 251 Pokémon. Pretty niche. Next, the Heavy Ball, from Black Apricorns. A ball for catching heavy Pokémon. Which works as intended. The heavier the Pokémon is, the bigger the increase to the catch rate. Although, there are two strange things to note about the Heavy Ball. First, it is the only ball which does not multiply the catch rate, but adds a set value to it. Which means its use is not just limited to heavy Pokémon, but rare heavy Pokémon. In fact, in practice, this ball results in a significant increase for only Lugia and Snorlax. That's it! For every single other Pokémon, you're better off just using an Ultra Ball. Also, it is the only ball which makes your catch rate worse if you do not fulfill its requirements. Additionally, while this ball works in Gold and Silver, in Pokémon Crystal, the game misinterprets junk data, resulting in a plus 40 catch rate increase for Kadabra, Tauros, and Sunflora, instead of the intended minus 20. On the topic of busted balls, the Level Ball, from Red Apricorns a ball for lower level Pokémon. It seemingly works as intended. The increase is correctly based on the difference in level between your Pokémon and the wild Pokémon. The issue here is hidden. For some reason, using a level ball bypasses the catch rate formula, resulting in the level ball increase being the only factor taken into account. If the opposing Pokémon is at 1 HP and sleeping, well, too bad, it doesn't matter. Made from pink apricorns, the Love Ball is made for catching the opposite gender. 
In practice, the Love Ball works on Pokémon of the same species of your current Pokémon. Which is not clear at all from the description, but still working as intended. And of the same sex. That's right, this ball does the exact opposite of what it says. I mean, it's not like I have a problem with it. I just did not know 1999 Game Freak was so open. If you have a thing for same-sex relationships, no need to be shy and hide it in the code, mm-hmm. Anyway, last but certainly not least, the Moon Bowl, made from yellow apricorns. A ball for Moonstone Evolvers. Simple, to the point, easy to understand. This ball multiplies by 4 the catch rate of Pokémon who evolve using a Burn Heal. A Burn Heal. This one's my favorite. They messed up the item ID. So now it checks for Pokémon evolving via the Burn Heal method. In case you do not know, out of 251 Pokémon, a grand total of zero evolve using a Burn Heal basically turning the Moon Ball into a prettier Pokeball. Actually, the Moon Ball is worse than a Pokeball, because you can buy a Pokeball. In Gold and Silver, you can only ask Kurt to make one special ball per day. This was changed in Crystal, where you can give all your Apricorns of the same color at once. But the Apricorns themselves are limited. That's right, there is only one apricorn tree of each color in the world, on Route 37, 42, and Azalea Town. And they also take a day to blossom. Which made these special balls really rare and inconvenient to get, and explains why their brokenness flew under many people's radar, myself included. Nobody used them, or not in high enough quantity to notice the issues. Funnily enough, it is probably the reason these glitches did not get noticed early enough to be fixed. To be honest, I don't mind the special balls being completely busted. It adds to the charm of the first two Pokemon generations. Incredibly broken games, and yet so much fun to play. And there we have it. I am going to start the Gen 2 Living decks at some point, but I had to share this before starting. It's pretty great. I hope you found this as funny as I did and enjoyed this silly video. Thank you for your time and I wish you a wonderful day. Oh yeah, mmm, oh come on, mmm. <laughs>